Hey, this is Anand Shimpi from Anantech.com, and I want to take you on a quick tour of some of the key features and enhancements of iOS 5. Now let's start with notifications. Uh, this is the new banner alert system for notifications. You see the uh, text message appears there at the top, then disappears. You can interact with it. And uh, this is what happens when you get the lock screen. You keep getting uh, notifications and they keep stacking up like that. You can even reply to them or, or interact with them individually. There's also the notification center, uh, which is this shade here that's uh, very reminiscent of Android uh, notifications. You can manually clear notifications there as well. On the iPad, we finally have tab browsing support, um, and again on the iPad 2 as well. So here we pull up uh, Anantech, and we'll pull up Apple's homepage, Wikipedia as well. You can quickly sw swap between them. You can tap and hold to bring up new tabs. Tabs will load in the background. So we uh, clicked on a link in Wikipedia. We're going to open another tab here. We'll go back. The Wikipedia page is now fully loaded. Go to the tab we just opened. And that tab will be fully loaded as well. The iPad 2 uh, or iPad um, deployment of iOS 5 also gets some keyboard options. You can undock the keyboard. And this is still the, the full keyboard, uh, the standard full keyboard option, but now you have a split mode, uh, which lets you do this kind of two handed typing. And it's great if you're kind of walking around and, and actually need to type something quickly on a, on a tablet. Very similar to what was announced for Windows 8. We also get new multi-touch gestures, so four-finger uh, swipe to reveal the task manager, a four- or five-finger pinch to, uh, to get back to the home screen, you can actually pause the animation in the middle of it and go back, similar to other animations within iOS. And you can also do four- or five-finger swipe to switch between apps. That's actually a huge boon to uh, iPad productivity, uh, since you don't have to go through the whole song and dance of double tapping the home button, picking the app, and, and then uh, tapping on the app. What's really missing here is uh, kind of an indication of what apps you have running, uh, sort of like a, a command tab or an alt tab preview, um, or a WebOS-like card system. iMessage is obviously a big part of iOS 5. And here we have two devices connected over Wi-Fi. And you can just get an idea of how quickly uh, iMessages are received at the receiving end on the right there. It's not quite IM speed, but it's pretty quick, a lot faster than SMS. Uh, and here's the exact same setup, but now we are sending via SMS. So you can see we've queued up a whole bunch of messages is there. It doesn't help that we're going from Verizon to AT&T either. So you can see when, when it's available, iMessage is a tremendous improvement over standard SMS. And of course, it also works on... Uh, iPads. iCloud is a obvious feature of iOS 5. Uh, and here we're going to test, test photo streaming. So I launched uh, the Photos app on the iPad 2 here. Looking at the photo stream, these are photos that were taken via an iPhone 4S. And we're actually going to take a few more with an iPhone 4S. So let's get the phone out here. And we're just going to snap a few pictures. Now both of these devices are connected over Wi-Fi. So we'll take a few pictures. Now what's going to happen is Apple is going to upload these photos from the iPhone 4S to the associated iCloud account. 
and then they're going to get synced automatically to all iCloud supported devices. So this iPad 2 and anything else that's connected to my and there you can see there's the first the first image right there. Anything else that's that's connected to my iCloud, my iCloud account including uh, Macs or PCs. And there's the next image. It's not instantaneous, but it's pretty quick. And again, everything has to be on Wi-Fi for this to work. And we got another image right there. It's pretty neat given that the iPad is a great content consumption device, um, but you uh, might be producing the content with something like an iPhone. And the last feature I wanted to touch on is cloud syncing of contacts. So here I've created a contact on my iPhone 4S, and in a matter of seconds, it appears on the iPad 2. I can go in and delete it from the iPad 2, and that change will propagate over the network to the iPhone 4S.